You are listening to the PRO Media Network, the next level in entertainment. To the Pelicans Post Game Report on the PRO Media Network for all things Pelicans. That's right, you're listening to the Sports Coma Pelican Post Game Report on the PRO Media Network. I'm Big Q bringing y'all in with my co host DC. How you doing, brother? Oh, I'm good, man. we bringing you podcast 145, that's 145. On this February the 4th, 2018 Super Bowl day. As we speak right now, the uh, New England Patriots are trailing Get the Philadelphia charge, Eagles 22 to 12 at the start of the third. So, first of all, we're going to welcome you guys in today's podcast, Pelican Post Game Report, with a round of applause. That's, of course, to you for joining us and for our supporters. As we continue to move forward in a very, very exciting season, drama field season for the New Orleans Pelicans. Hmm. And tonight's show will be recapping two shows, two back to backs the Pelicans' uh, matchups against the Thunders and the T Wolves, both away games. We'll reca- recap those both tonight with stats, facts, breakdowns, interviews from Al Gentry, Anthony Davis, who became the franchise's all time leading scorer a game or two ago. And, uh, of course, we'll have an interview by the first interview by Nikolai Mik- uh, Miklovic, Miklatic, Mikla, Miritich. I'm sorry, Miritich. We'll have an interview with him as well. We also talk about some of the signings that the Pelicans made outside of the uh, the last trade that they occurred with uh, sending Omir Isaac, Jameer Nelson, Tony Allen to Chicago for Nikolai Miritich. And, of course, a first-round draft pick to go with him. We cover that on our trade special. If y'all want to hear more of that, we land base the Dale Dips in that one as well <laughs> for, fun, for giving up a first-round pick to get Omir Asik and trade one. We let him have that. And we also uh, we are going to talk about other signings as the Pelicans move to sign Omeka Okafor, who comes back to New Orleans. Uh, if you remember, he was here as an overpaid center many years ago. Uh, That's right. Bring him so back. Give him some more money. Gotta, we'll cover that deal. De- DeAndre Liggins, who's one of our favorites, uh, a top defensive guy who can occasionally hit a three, was signed a two-year contract with the Pelicans. We'll get into that and give it's you the Tony particulars. Tony Allen spot, huh? Yeah, Tony Allen. He's the Tony Allen's guy, uh, uh, the spot now. And then we'll also talk about the other transition that didn't that came but didn't didn't happen for him, which is obviously the Terrence Jones signing, which the Pelicans were lined up to sign Terrence Jones to a ten year a ten day contract. <sighs> it, it just well, something happened, so we'll cover I, that. I don't get that. Then we'll have a preview of the Utah game as the Pelicans line up to face the Utah Jazz Monday night in the Smoothie King Center. That's two of uh, first of two home games that'll be here before the Pelicans hit the road again. And now let's get right into a DC. Yo. Two games the Pelicans have faced. We're gonna start with the Thunder first, of course. Russell Westbrook in that game. That was a very interesting game. It's a good game, man. Really good game. As the Pelicans really show what they uh, what they were made of. They looked terrible in the first quarter, <laughs> uh, losing the quarter thirty two to twenty two, and I was just quite frustrated, you know, in that yeah. quarter. But when the second quarter turned, a, a, a switch went on somewhere, and the Pelicans won every quarter after that, beating the OKC Thunder. By 14 points, 114 to 100, excellent game uh, by New Orleans. They tr- At first, they looked terrible, like you made the comment earlier about they switched the third quarter, the, the first quarter for the third quarter now. Uh, so, <laughs> which was, uh, hey, that works for me. That's been going the, that the works last for two me. games, man. But, that wor- switched it. but if that's the case, it works for me to give them opportunity to play bad early so they can look good the last three quarters. Man, so, I how, guess you got to take the law of averages. How about we not play bad at all? I hear I mean, you. On you that. got to pick your spots where you're gonna play great, but let's not play bad at all. Let's play okay. Let's let's at least get 28, 27, you know, up, not twenty two. I, I understand that, and I agree with you, you know. But I don't think they have the ability uh, to kind of turn it on like that, you know. If they did, I, I would recommend that they play 
better defense than what they do all season long. But anyway, look, looking at some of the particulars on this game, Anthony Davis blew up in this game. He had he had 43 points, blew 10 rebounds in this game. He had 38 minutes of action. And this is actually the game uh, when Anthony Davis took the all-time Pelican scorer mm. uh, mark from from David West and uh, he's going to put that sucker way up in the 11s and 12s and 13s before it all said and done but um, that's, that's it that's all you think well I mean <laughs> I'm just saying beyond two years you never he only, know he only 24 well but beyond two years my man you never know based on how Dale Dimps and all uh, of them acting yeah. so you, you, that's why I, I don't want to think about it like that <laughs> but anyway let's look at some more particulars on this uh, on this uh, Thunder matchup um, in the game now Thunder obviously uh, the, the Pelicans, like I said, they looked bad early, but eventually they came back. They won all three quarters. Andy Davis was the top dog. It was his night, no doubt about it. He carried the, 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 the day for them. And also looking at some of the other fantastic scoring that was done by the Pelicans, uh, Etwan Moore, who was fantastic, 26 points, 10 of 14, shooting from the field. He was perfect from three-point line, 4-4 four four on the night. He really stepped up in a major league fashion and played well. And then other double figures for the Pelicans was obviously Darius Miller off the bench. He was uh, pretty good, too, shooting four of six, three of five from downtown. He had 11 points. And Drew Holiday, now Drew Holiday – only had he had a double double. He had eleven points, eleven assists in this game. Word. Which, but his defense in this game, I mean, he was absolutely astounding. He played Paul George. He was battling Paul George. He had a man. He got up against Westbrook. He had to guard Ferguson, the other guy. Then he was just all over the place. And I just got to give a lot of respect, even though he didn't score a lot of points in this game. Drew Holiday played a hell of a game defensively. Also, big shout out to Rajon Rondo in, in this matchup too. He finished with seven points, but dished out thirteen assists. He played in the fourth quarter of this matchup, which I would love to see right. more of that. Right. You know, but being that Jameer Nelson usually would be that guy, Ian Clark, and their mixed match, and he might get that opportunity because they don't they don't seem like they're fully vested well, in, 30, in in Mike James. Minutes. So he got thirty four minutes, and Rondo usually get around twenty four twenty five. So. That was good to see. Absolutely. Let's take a look at, before we give you some more, any more of the stats and facts on the game, let's listen to what Coach L. Gentry had to say over the win over the OKC Thunder. Here's Coach Gentry. Oh, I, I thought we approached the game the right way, right from the start. You know, I uh, uh, thought we played with energy. Uh, I thought we maintained our poise throughout, you know, even in the first quarter when they made the run and second quarter when they, you know, got a little separation. Uh, our guys had. I, I, I like the attitude that they had when they came to the bench. You know, they they felt like that. We missed some easy shots, and we had, uh, you know, maybe dropped a couple of defensive assignments. But uh, you know, they. I, I felt like we we had confidence, and uh, and and then you know, obviously the third quarter start was big. I mean, we've struggled so much in the third quarter to to have a start like we did. I thought gave us even more confidence, and then uh, we were able to close the game. Coach, what about Anthony Davis tonight? Now he's the lead your team in scoring. He also became the franchise's all-time leading scorer. I, I don't think that's much of a surprise to anyone. It was just a matter of time. But uh, I thought he played great. You know, it's not, you know, I don't like the fact that he has to battle a guy like Steven Adams and, you know, and play those 37 minutes. Those 37 minutes become like 50 when you, when you got a guy like that leaning on you and beating you. But I thought he did a great job. I thought Chet did a great job coming in. For the minutes that he did, I thought our bench played played really well, and uh, and because of that, we were able to at least get those guys out of the game and not have those, you know, forty minute uh, uh, games that they had to play. Could you identify, Coach, what was different about this third quarter that perhaps you can duplicate in other games? Yeah, I wish so much I knew. <laughs> I wish so much that I knew, you know, what you know sparked them and and what made us go out with just a lot of more. Uh, a lot more focus and resolve. I mean, I, I wish I did. That's that's the way we have to approach it. And I think when we do that, uh, we put ourselves in a situation where we're not playing from behind. You know, and I think if we're not playing from behind, we do a pretty good job. How much of an advantage was it catching the Thunder on the second of the back to back on the road? Yeah, you know what? I said this before. I don't. I don't put any. I mean, I think you just play games and. You know, you you play a game. You know, we've done the same thing. Every team in the NBA has played back to back. Uh, so I think you're accustomed to doing that. Uh, you know, maybe they're a little tired, but I've never seen Russell Westbrook ever not have energy. So uh, 
you know, I don't know how much that was a factor. That's Coach L. Gentry talking about some of the uh, statistics from the game, his thoughts on the game. Compliment to uh, (laughs) Drew Holiday. He said he never saw Russell Westbrook not have energy. Yeah. Right, Drew right. Holiday, Drew Holiday in trouble. Thing, right? Yeah, you, you're in trouble. You can, ain't no way you can match that. That's that's <laughs> that's, that's that's something God given. New Orleans Saints shot 51, percent 46 of 90 from the field for four, uh, 54 percent from the three point line, while holding Oakley, Oklahoma City to just 38 percent, 37 to 97 from the floor, and 25 percent from the three point line. The Thunder's big three of Carmelo Anthony, Paul George, and Russell Westbrook were all held under 20 points apiece. Drew, uh, Drew Holiday and Rajon Rondo combined the 24 of New Orleans 30 assists on the night after trailing. New Orleans jumped out to an early 12 to 6 lead. Oklahoma City closed the first quarter with a 26 to 10 run, and then trailing by 16 by at 40 to 24, their largest deficit of the game with 10 minutes and nine seconds remaining in the first half. The Pelicans closed the second quarter on a 30 to 18 run, cutting the lead to just four points at the break. Then New Orleans opened up the second half. They went on a 16-14 run, and they never looked back, taking a 70-62 to lead with eight minutes remaining in the, in the third quarter. Then the Thunder, still within striking distance, with under two minutes to play. Anthony Davis sealed the win for the Pelicans, connecting on two three-pointers from the top of the key, as in many possessions, giving New Orleans a double-digit lead with just over a minute to play in regulation. The win snaps a four-game losing streak to OKC. And they also, you know, uh, get the first win without DeMarcus Cousins. So a major win in that situation. DC, quick thoughts before we play a little of this Anthony Davis interview. Very big win, man. I was impressed with the poise, uh, like you said, and the ability for them to fight back being down by 10 points early in that first quarter, uh, knowing DeMarcus Cousins is out and, you know, they're going through this transitionary period. They could have easily gave up, but they fought back, man, and I thought it was amazing to also see uh, both Drew Holiday and Rondo put up double digits assists. It's almost like they was fighting over who was going to be the point guard. <laughs> they did an excellent play for both those guys, especially we looking at the assists, but the defense was all over the place. Let's listen to yeah, The defense what, was amazing. We lost the rebound battle, and we won the game. We couldn't yeah. have did that without stellar defense. The excellent defense. Here's Andy Davis' thoughts after the OKC win. Got to be one of the best wins of the season. Yeah, um, everybody just competed. You know, we stayed poised. Um, you know, we kept battling, kept fighting. Um, guys made plays. Um, it was a team effort. It seemed like turnovers was a, was a problem in the first half, but you guys cleaned that up a lot. So what do you think about it? Was it just boys? Or- yeah, no, we just turned it over. They had 19 points of transition. Um, so we just wanted to make sure that we took care of the basketball. Um, you know, we were kind of we were solid in the half court, but you know, they were getting out and running off our turnover. So um, we figured we'd take care of the basketball and make them beat us in the half court. We had a shot of winning the basketball game. I know you don't like to dwell too much on the individual stuff, but you became the all-time leader in franchise history. What's your reaction to accomplish that? Uh, that's, that's huge. Um, big time for me. Um, <clears throat> but it's the, it's the team effort, man. Um, then God put me in position to score and be successful. Um, you know, everybody. Um, from, you know, guys who was here my rookie year to guys who are here now. Um, everybody, <clears throat> you know, played their part um, and allowed me to, um, you know, be able to get that accomplishment. You had 40-something points tonight. What did you think led to that? It seemed like they, you, were, you guys were running the lob play really successfully a ton. You made a couple threes. It just seemed like you were able to do stuff in a lot of different areas. Yeah, um, I was trying to attack early, um, and they were they were playing it. Everybody was playing boxing the elbow, loading up. So um, I figured I tried to get the jump shot going and try to go from there. But um, like I said, the lobs was there, so I um, was able to, um, get a couple of those, and then other guys made plays and made shots. <clears throat> and, um, we kind of put them in the bond where um, Steven Downs was in between two, um, and then they had to help me. Each one got some open looks, so uh, and Darius as well. So um, we just wanted to play together. What do you think of your defense as a team in the second half against a really good offensive team? It seemed like you forced a lot of turnovers and really put them in a situation where they just weren't, weren't doing a lot offensively. Yeah, um, we just wanted to um, come out and just play aggressive. Um, we know our third quarters were our worst quarters. Um, I think we were last in the league, and you know, we just wanted to come out with energy. Um, and we knew it started with defense. Um, so we just had to come out on the defensive end and, <clears throat> and just attack, um, you know, make guys um, take tough shots and you know, try to go back on the other end and score. What do you think of each one? It seemed like you set the tone for 
the way the game overall, just the way he scored and made almost all his shots? Yeah, uh, I think it was 10 for 14. You know, it was very efficient. Um, and he played a hell of a game. You know, I think you know Drew did a great job on Paul. Uh, you know, getting into him a little bit. Like I said, they played last night, so we just wanted to come out and be aggressive. Hey, did you, what did you like about most about this win? I mean, under the circumstances. That's Anthony Davis talking about the win over the OKC Thunder. I just wanted to put to y'all fans, let y'all know that Russell Westbrook walked clean off the court. He ain't turn around, he ain't dab nobody off. Say word. He just walked clean off the court. But anyway, the Pelicans, they win a second game against this team. They got one final contest to play them on April the 1st. So hopefully they kick their ass then as well. I ain't like what Russell Westbrook, uh, just because you lost, you could have hollered. But anyway, when we come back on the other side of the break, we're going to talk more about uh, the Pelicans' second matchup against the T-Wolves. We also got some other Pelican news, uh, uh, signing news as well, and some breakdown on that. Plus, we'll preview the Utah game as well. All that on the other side of the break. You're listening to the Pelican Post Game Report on the PRO Media Network. Stick around. Get all the latest news and updates from your New Orleans Pelicans at the Pelicans I View. The new and official Pelicans Daily Journal, covering everything Pelicans. Attention everyone. Get, get breakdown on games, free agent signings and potential moves, unbiased opinions and straight up facts, with statistical analysis from G-Balance. Go to www.thesportsdaily.com forward slash Pelicans dash I dash View. I'm a Saints and Pelicans fan, so the only podcast I can get my fix is The Sports Coma with Big Q. The guy's intense, funny, and they always keep it real. Check out The Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys. What's up, sports world? This Big Q from The Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys. Talking to you about the website, theposhlifestyle.com. That's right, poshlifestyle.com. A great website where you can get great products at great prices. They sell organic herbs, vitamins, supplements, water filters for your home, EMF and cell phone radiation protection, healing magnetics and healing crystals, personal protection devices like cell phones, stun guns, and mace spray, organic deodorants, shampoos, soaps, toothpaste, and more. They also sell 10A grade Brazilian hair. 10A music is available now. All kind of the latest downloadable mixtapes. So what are you waiting for? Head on over to theposhlifestyle.com. That's the posh lifestyle. Life spell with a Y. L Y F E style.com. Put in the sports coma for the 10% discount on your purchase. It's a win-win. So get your mind and body right with the posh lifestyle. Get ESPN or Fox. Get straight sports talk from the Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys. You're listening to the Pelicans Post Game Report on the PRO Media Network for all things Pelicans. That's right, all things Pelicans. Welcome back to the Sports Coma's Pelican Post Game Report. Big Q and DC co-hosting. We in this thing, man. We just got you covering the New Orleans 14-point win over the classless Russell Westbrook. <laughs> I just joking. Uh, anyway, uh, we quieted the thunder. Yeah, they, they didn't have too much going. And plus, tonight they lost to the Lakers as well. So something's troubled. Something's going on in uh, Thunderland. Anyway, um, let's look into the next contest you heard Anthony Davis was breaking down his thoughts on that win 110 to I mean 114 uh, to 100 win over the uh, Utah uh, OKC Thunder now we move on to recap the Minnesota Timberwolf game that was the game last night of course wasn't a very uh, I ain't gonna say it wasn't a great game it kind of made me the first quarter alone was first half just, just I don't know man yeah, it was depressing basketball, bad basketball. Uh, not the same energy. Of course, Anthony Davis went on 10. And it was shorthanded against OKC. And yeah. they still were able to beat that team by 14. Well, AK, OKC isn't top heavy, though. They don't have a, a Carl Anthony Towns, you know. They man, don't. they got some players. Gorgie, Dang, and all those guys. Yeah, man. man, they got some players over there. Anyway, they got a lot on the back end. They're very, they're probably one of the most balanced teams in the NBA, honestly. They are. They are. And then, you know, the crazy part about it is that the guy we was trying to get from that small force, Shabazz Muhammad, 
He Could can't even get, start over he, here. Right. He's a start over here. He's third string small forward for the Minnesota uh, Timberwolves. But let's listen to Coach L. Gentry, who's pretty animated on the sidelines doing his uh, angry uh, angry goldfish look. But here's uh, what <laughs> Coach L. Gentry had to say about that Timberwolves loss. Well, do you agree with that and just can never get over the hump? Yeah. I, yeah. I mean, I, I think that's exactly what happened. You know, you can't, uh, you know, you can't play uphill the entire game. Uh, that's what we had to do because we got off to such a bad start. And, uh, and, and then we, we didn't make enough of the little bitty plays, the small plays that you have to make, you know, uh, coming up with a loose ball here and there, or, or coming up with a rebound. We just, we didn't have enough of those plays tonight. And then uh, some of the guys, like, I'm not making excuses, but I just thought Drew was tired, you know. Uh, his legs weren't quite there, but uh, I thought the effort was there and everybody, you know, played hard and competed. We just didn't quite have enough juice to get over the hump. But I thought we fought back, and there was a couple of big plays where, you know, we had the ball and, you know, we, we had a fast break with an eight-point game, and uh, we, we turned it over. And then there was another one where, uh, uh, you know, we missed the layup that came down and made the, made the three. And so those kind of plays, we couldn't quite get there. So, you know, we just have to live with it. Coach, what was your first impression of Miritich in your system tonight? Oh, I think he's going to be fine. You know, he's a competitor. Uh, I still don't think he's, you know, anywhere close to being as comfortable as he will be shooting the ball. I thought he passed on a few shots that we'd like to have him shoot. But, you know, I thought he competed. And, you know, you walk out and get a double-double the first night out and on a team that you hadn't even really had a, a shoot-around, let alone a practice. So I think he's going to be fine, and I think he'll add something to our team. All things considered, the win last night, the loss tonight, would you view this as a successful road trip, or did you need or want to win them both, obviously? Well, I think, I think any time you want to win both of them. This team is a really good basketball team, and they got so many weapons. And I thought we did a good job, you know, like we did a good job on Wiggins, you know, but we let two of the other guys get off. But we do a good job on this guy, you know. Uh, Gorgie Dane has kind of killed us over the three games that we played. I thought we did a good job on him, but then... Call after the Towns had a pretty good game. So, you know, you just got to be really solid uh, to be able to beat this team. And, uh, you know, they're going to be a tough out. They'll be a tough out, whoever plays. Josh Allen played significant minutes tonight with a double-double. How do you think his development's coming along? Well, I thought he did a good job for us. You know, obviously he hadn't played very many uh, minutes, and it's hard to find time for him, you know, when we had DeMarcus and AD out there. Uh, but I think, you know, the way he played tonight, you know, he earns an opportunity to have more minutes. So uh, that's a situation where we'll try to give him more minutes. I think we got to be careful with the matchup. We don't want to put him in a situation where he's just going to be completely overpowered. But I thought his activity and what he did and uh, uh, his, his, his activity on the boards were really good tonight. And, uh, you know, just his running and getting out and, uh, you know, trying to come up with a couple of easy baskets is good also. That's 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 well, uh, help L Gentry, the head coach of New Orleans Pelicans. Uh, and I like to take this minute, uh, DC, and we don't have too much time to do it, but I'm gonna do it anyway. I'm gonna take this time <laughs> here to say uh, big ups to the guys from the Pelican Post Game Report and the Sports Coma, because we've been calling this the whole season long when we first seen. <sighs> Play we're Sheik speaking, Diallo. And we're speaking about Sheik Diallo. Play Sheik Diallo. Who had a pretty, who had a real good game against this team. The last two games, he's finally started. He's only playing them because they're brazen yeah, thin, no death wise, right? So you look at the what he did against when he played against those. Okay, so he played tonight against a energyless men, uh, New Orleans club, and he was able to basically uh, for 15 minutes he was three of eight, four four from the free throw line. He had 10 points, 10 rebounds, a double double in 15 minutes. Now I I might have to start a a movement that says uh, let's replace. Uh, replace Sheik with uh, uh, pull. Uh, let's Dante put Sheik Cunningham. there and move Cunningham out of there, because Cunningham to me, I don't know what it is. He looked craptastic well, the last two games. This game he played twenty minutes. He was two of six. He was five points, one rebound. Now he's his stake is he's supposed to be a, a defensive guy. He had one oh, rebound. He looks horrible on defense and offense. He can he hit, does not he can, fit. He can hit that three point shot, bro, and that's that's it. He that's why that Al Gentry shot. keep him out there. But every once in a while he give you one. He give you about one three point a game. We don't need that, buddy. We don't need that. He can keep his one three-point shot. Anyway, that's, let's, that's why. That's the only reason I can excuse I can make for him playing over Sheik Diallo. Yeah, Other than Sheik, excuse. you know, being young and inexperienced. 
Well, let's break about the same size. Well, let's look at it like this. Let's break it down. Minnesota, they got to win 118 to 107 for the second straight game between the two teams. Minnesota claim a wire to wire victory. It's getting old. They swept the, the Pelicans, matter of fact, on a season series for nothing. Timberwolves led by as many. <laughs> you might see him in the playoffs. The Minnesota Timberwolves led as many, but 22 points during the matchup. They shot 50% from the float. They shot 47% from deep versus New Orleans, 41% from the field and 24% from deep. Making the Pelicans debut was, of course, we didn't even talk about Meritage, who was able to play this game, play outstanding. Nikolai Meritage came in and do, do every, done, did what everything that we expected him to do. He provided a three-point game. Matter of fact, his first shot as a Pelican was a three-pointer. Nikolai Mikl- he recorded 18 points and 12 rebounds off the bench. And then, of course, Sheik Diallo with his double-double needs to play more, even at the expense of Dante Cunningham. I've seen enough of Cunningham. Andy Davis scored 19 of his 38 points in the first quarter for New Orleans. Davis was the only starter to finish with double figures. Uh, finish with double figures. With the win, New Orleans sweeps the season series, the season series against New Orleans because we, oh, we've been mentioning that. Minnesota that they beat them. sweeps them. Right. Well, yeah. yeah, they swept the season series against them. That's the first time that happened since 2004, by the way. Anyway, let's move past and, and look at some of the statistics of the matter. Uh, DC, what strikes your eye before we get into this interview with Andy Davis? Um, the thing that stood out to me was uh, just basically the we, – we ain't getting enough out of our bench, bro. And you, you got a team – that's Even with Sheik Diallo team. doing what he did, you feel, I mean, still feel got, the same way? She got 10 points, 10 rebounds, but that ain't enough. That's not enough when you matching up with a team that can go eight deep with quality players. Diallo played that in that OKC game, by the way, for 16 minutes. He has seven points and nine rebounds. So, I mean, he's been looking fantastic the last two, but, you know, it, to your point, I would have to say that I, I think a, a lot that's happening with this team, it was, they looked a little tired, to be honest with you. Uh, that OKC thing might have took a little bit more out of them than what we seen. We just naturally a bad matchup for the Timberwolves. We used to yeah. kick their butts a year ago, but now but that they got the upgrades of Gibson and, and Jimmy Butler, the Pelican killer, we just look worse and worse against I'm, this I'm, team. Meritage is basically a starter, whether he come off the bench or not. Pretty much, you're gonna play a starter. He's a correct. starter, so I mean, if once you take away that 18 points, you had Ian Clark and Diallo for 19. You know. Uh, in Minnesota, they they gonna do it one through one through five, man. They getting double digits, so the only way we can't get double digits one through five, you know what I'm saying? So we we gotta have a bench. Several players, I think, it's several or eight players are in double figures uh, scoring on that team. You had uh, let's see, one, two, three, five players were yes. all in double figures, and we probably only had what one, two. We had three players in double figures, man. Right. You well, know, versus their five. Least, well, and one of them was off our bench. Right. So we we you, I mean you gotta go deep against them and we tried you know we played a heavy rotation of people I think Al Gentry did a good job with getting a lot of guys time um, we basically played everybody except a Mecca Okafor you know so to me if you would have got more production uh, chipped in with those guys off the bench as well defensively too is a big part of what I'm talking about um, then maybe we could have made covered that spread in them eleven points. Probably probably could. Uh, the bench didn't uh, help out that I mean, much. AD gave, so. you, gave you 38. He, you can't ask for more than that. For right, him, man. right. After, He'd have had three after the 35 40, plus games in a row. Man. Plus the la- the 40 point game the previous night to, to seal the deal against a very tough uh, OKC club. Let's move into some of our news before we preview the Utah matchup for Monday. Uh, the Pelicans made some news today. They signed Andre Lick, DeAndre Liggins to a two year deal. Of course, DeAndre Liggins was with the Pelicans. He signed two 10-day contracts. They seen enough of them to offer him a two-year, a two million, uh, excuse me, a two-year deal, but the terms of, uh, of the money was not readily available. I wonder why we didn't play line, him so. last night. Might have been holding out, you think. <laughs> <laughs> it worked. Anyway, uh, also another piece of information to pass on to you. Of course, you, we, you a lot of people were looking for the Pelicans to outrightly sign the uh, center, the mongoose, Monroe to a contract. The uh, mongoose. The mongoose. No, no, the, the moose. I'm sorry, the moose. But the moose went north this time as he signed with the Celtics for five million dollars, and that moved the Pelicans to sign uh, Mecca Okafor uh, not to a contract. Report, and I'm so, pretty sure he's only gonna be here about ten days. This is right. It's a ten day contract. <laughs> it's not worth reporting. <laughs> well, goddamn. 
Shoot a Mecca Oka for golly. Uh, I'm saying that to buck him up. I hope you hear this, Mecca. Come on, man. We need something. Well, if that's any, if he classifies for something, that he's definitely the point because of Mecca Oka for was in the New Orleans jersey before he was a starting center uh, for the team for many uh, unproductive years. Maybe one year I think it was <laughs> where they had David West and all of them together. They went. They, they had one playoff appearance. I remember, but it was pretty un, uh, pretty Actually, forgettable. We had Tyson Chandler. <laughs> When that happened. So, Mecca, one of the more forgettable centers that you can ever yeah. possibly imagine was a Mecca Oka for We're pretty so. down on our luck when we had a Mecca Oka for Yeah, right, right, right. So, he signed a 10-day contract, like DC said. I didn't say it, that it's not worth reporting. Um, let's move forward <laughs> and talk about another deal. Like, I had a man want to fight me. You see? <laughs> he don't seem like the type of a violent fellow. <laughs> but uh, we look at uh, uh, the other deal that fell true was the deal that ultimately was what I thought should have happened. It was something I've been saying on the previous podcast about the injustice that did, did Terrence Jones. The Pelicans were had a deal set for the, to sign Terrence Jones to a 10-day contract, but at the last minute, they pulled out of the deal. Why? And I, I don't know. No details are readily made. Whether it's a money situation, I have absolutely it's a 10 no day idea. Contract. How much money can he really want for 10 days? I, I don't know. The Pelicans pulled out of the deal to sign Terrence Jones. I think that's a bad deal. Maybe they come back to the table and get him done. Miritich they need to, they need to and Terrence them. Jones off the bench. Replace Dante Cunningham with Terrence Jones minutes. More production from the there bench. I actually like that move, so please make it happen. Terrence Dale Jones Dempsey. can actually spot in a, a small forward for you. He's not a great shooter, but he definitely can guard the small forward position. And he can uh, also take on a small forward on the defensive end and probably abuse him. So I think it's a great move to get him. I mean, guy was putting up numbers when he was here. I couldn't understand why we got rid of him, to be honest. Right. So I, that that's also the truth. I think you're absolutely right on that. Before we move on to the Utah preview, we're gonna play a little bit of the newest Pelicans, Mikolai Nir- Mirror. It was it was great uh, uh, for me. Uh, true, I didn't have a too much time to prepare. Uh, we didn't have a practice this morning because they played last night. And uh, but I had a meeting with the coach, with the team this morning, and uh, I watched some film. It was helpful, and uh, those guys make it simple, very for me tonight. So it was hef- helpful, and uh, you know, tough loss. But I'm very happy, you know, to be with the guys, to be with with the team, you know, and uh, you know, it's a great feeling to be here. Elder Gentry mentioned that there's some similarities between maybe offensively the style of play that you guys used in Chicago and what they do here. Did you find that to be the case? Just in the first yeah, there is some. Uh, it's it's similar. Uh, I mean, I was playing with Rondo there in Chicago, and uh, I know the way how he likes to play. And uh, uh, I mean, you know, a lot of transition, a lot of simple plays. You know, uh, trying to play with the pace, and uh, this is how I feel comfortable too. So. Today, uh, you know, I, I know they didn't run, they didn't run a lot of plays because I was not, you know, I didn't know much of those. So, uh, you know, but I felt comfortable. I felt I felt great, and uh, you know, I had great support for all the team and uh, for the coaching staff. So, I'm here to help. That first quarter there, did they just have a bit more energy than you guys to start this one? They did. It looks like they. It's uh, M- N- Mikolai. Nikolai Meritich on his interview, of course, you heard what he was saying about playing. Of course, let's move forward and move into the Utah preview. DC, looking at the Utah game, of course, this team is currently on a five-game winning streak. They are burning up right now. Burning up. They're they, they really looking good. And Of course, we remember the, the first matchup the Pelicans had when uh, Donovan Mitchell took them apart. Then, of course, the Pelicans did get some revenge not too long ago. In the in the series, uh, they let me see when it was uh, December first. They Donovan beat him. Then I think it was the fifth, no, the fir- the third, the third of uh, January of this past January, where they got a ten point win in Utah against this team. Now in two games against New Orleans, Donovan Mitchell averaging thirty two and a half points a game. He's uh, he's an absolute terror. Then uh, and there's other guys involved that haven't played. Alex Burke is another guy that used to play. We don't know what this team. Uh, uh, is going to do from shooting wise, but the Pelicans look a lot better for that. And Nikolai Miritich in the contest. And the last ten games against the Utah Jazz, the Pelicans are three and seven. In the last five, they are one and four. We're looking at this team coming into this matchup, DC, and they did a pretty do- j- good job on Donovan Mitchell. But this Utah club, man, that they facing off against, this is a different club altogether, yeah, they man. Got big, they got their big guy back this time. 
Uh, Rudy Gobert's back Rudy's in the house. Back. Yeah, so we, we, it's, it's hard for us to beat him with Rudy. Yeah, that's right. Absolutely. Uh, I think uh, Alvin Gentry should play some uh, some old New Orleans clips. You know, like when we was the Jazz, because uh, they stole our name. That'd be a little motivation for us to go ahead and take them out, man. Yeah, they, actually, they, yeah. What I said, they were on a five game winning streak. They average. They look good, man. One hundred and three points a game, giving up one hundred and two, something like the Pels to do. 40, 46% from the field shooting. They rebounded about 41 rebounds a game, 21 assists, five blocks, nine steals, winning five in a row, seven of three of the last uh, 10 matchups. New Orleans, of course, have been kind of struggling a bit, averaging a 111, giving up 110, uh, shooting 48.5% from the field, 43 rebounds a game, 26 assists, five blocks, and eight steals per game. They lost one against Minnesota, a six and four the last 10 contests of course uh utah is 24 and 28 the pelicans are 20 28 and 24 so dc with all that said and being that the fact rudy gobert is back and demarcus cousins is on the a uh, injury list um we're short-handed i didn't uh, uh they did get ligands deal done we still have an extra roster spot to add somebody with all that being said mirror titch and ball who wins this game um, I think we we dropped this game. Um, Utah win has, one, lose one. Well, we lost one, lost one. <laughs> so, that, so we win this. Uh, nah, okay, I'm not going with that philosophy okay. right now. All um, right. I think they dropped this game because Utah has always been a difficult matchup for us because you have Gobert in there, and I think the fact that Demarcus Cousins is not there, and I don't know if they can. Figure that. out how to get past Gobert. I mean, Andy Davis only averages about 24 points a game right. against Utah. Drew Holiday usually shows up with about Yo, 17. Yo, you want to come out here? Rondo chips in with like 12 a game. So we could win. I just don't see it happening. They're still gelling with our Meritage. Um, we got Liggins coming back, and there's just a lot of shuffling going on. I don't think Utah is the type of team you want to experiment with. It is. I, I'm going to have to give. I think I'm going to give New Orleans a win on this one. I think the New Orleans Pelicans will get it done against Utah. They'll find a way to get it done at home. They're playing well at home. I think they'll figure out a way to the right personnel. I think the Pelicans will kind of get happy of being back home. I think they take this uh, from the Utah Jazz. Anyway, that's the show for tonight. We'd like to thank y'all for joining us on the Pelican Post Game Report. And if you want to support our show, go to our Pantheon page. Patreon page, www.patreon.com slash the PRO Media Network. Give a donation. Also, share our show. Join our social media pages as well. I'm BQ. That is DC. We're all here. And thank you for listening to us at the Pelican Post Game Report. Peace. ESPN or Fox. Get straight sports talk from the Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys. What's up, world? This is DC from the Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys. Have you ever been sitting in front of your computer screen, all in traffic, tired, lacking energy, feeling drained? Did you know there are electromagnetic fields or EMF waves all around you that cause this disease? Get it? This ease? Luckily here at Posh Lifestyle, you can get your EMF protection. They have pendants, the shell dye bricks, cubes, and pyramids. Check out the PoshLifestyle.com. That's life spelled with a Y. P-O-S-H-L-Y-F-E-S-T-Y-L-E.com for all your health needs. So get your mind and body right with a Posh Lifestyle. Clear, clean, great tasting filtered water. We're all thirsty for it. But in the U.S. alone, an estimated 2.5 million plastic bottles are added to the environment each year in search of the perfect drink of water. There has to be a better solution, and there is. Crystal Quest, a leader in the manufacturing of water filtration technology, has been providing clean, drinkable water for 20 years. With a deep commitment to providing the highest quality products and excellent customer service, Crystal Quest has been recognized by such leaders as Consumers Digest, Dr. Oz, and Colin Ingram's The Water Drinking Book. Providing cost-effective, reliable water filtration systems for residential, commercial, and industrial customers worldwide, 
offering our customers the cleanest and most environmental friendly drinking water at a rating of high purity. With Crystal Quest's water filtration technology, you can rest assured that your water will be crystal clear. Contact our network of authorized distributors and join our thousands of satisfied customers. Just log in to theposhlifestyle.com. Once again, that is theposhlifestyle.com. You're listening to the Pelicans Post Game Report on the PRO Media Network for all things Pelicans. In today's world, children are bombarded with negativity on television, online, and at school. Our kids need to have a positive outlook on life and the world around them. I want to share with you a valuable resource you can use to bring positivity into your child's life. It's the new book, 101 Powerful Children Affirmations, a guide to positive child self-image. From author and dad, G.J. Barabino. This is a simple guide loaded with wonderful and inspirational affirmations designed to uplift young people's spirits. This positive and powerful children affirmational is chock full and loaded with wonderful inspirational sayings that will lift your child's self-image to whole new levels through the awesome power of spoken word. 101 Powerful Children Affirmations, a guide to positive child self-image from author and dad, G.J. Barabino. Available on Amazon. Order a copy for yourself, your child's teachers, or anyone you know with children. 101 Powerful Children Affirmations, a guide to positive child self-image. Order your copy today.